Tracy, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll disappear and we'll leave everybody to you. Okay. <laughs> thanks ever so much, Heidi and Thea. Thank you for inviting me. I'm uh, really excited to give this talk about riding confidence. And I'm going to be talking about how we sabotage ourselves because we're not necessarily working with our minds. And when we do work with our minds, then that's when the, the confidence comes through. So let me just get onto my slides. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to look at five little ways that we, we do self-sabotage and each one is really easily remedied. You've got to know a little bit about the subconscious um, or it's sometimes called the unconscious mind. So let's have a little look at our mind, first of all. So this is um, a nice little iceberg picture and it's really commonly used. It, it comes from Freud, so it's really old. But this is what our mind's like. It's like an iceberg and the tip of the iceberg is our conscious mind. And, and this is the part of the mind that you're using right now to listen, to think about what I'm saying, to interpret the words. And we can see there, it's where we have our willpower, short-term memory, lots and lots of logic and critical thinking. Um, so it's really useful. And that conscious mind often thinks it's in charge. We often feel that that logical, analytical side of us is, is in charge of us. But when you look at the percentages, and on this picture it says 10%, um, but it, it sort of depends on what activity you're doing. Conscious mind could be down to 3% of your mind, just 3%, and, and sort of maximally 10%. Now, the rest of the mind, the subconscious or the unconscious, is, is 90 odd percent. So you can see that if you're trying to shift something like nerves or anxiety or even doubt in yourself using your conscious mind you're relying really on willpower and we know how willpower goes because who hasn't tried to diet or start a new year's resolution you know go to the gym every day and those types of things you're very often trying to do it on willpower and it gets you so far it's really useful but it's hard, isn't it? It's a real grind. So let's make things simpler for ourselves and let's have a look at the unconscious mind because this is where our beliefs are, good and bad beliefs and, and true beliefs about ourselves and totally false ones, limiting beliefs, our emotions, habits, values what's important to us, protective reactions, longer term memory, imagination and intuition. So we can see just as riders, beliefs, emotions, habits um, and memories in, are in there as well. That that's the part of the mind, not just because of the percentages that we need to be in, but also this is where we want to unlock a lot of our key uh, ways that we can work with the mind. So what I want to do is to tell you a little bit about the unconscious mind so you understand it a bit more because it's not like the conscious mind, it doesn't run on any logic and probably you know that already because lots of riders say things to me about their fears. Well it's not logical, you know my horse is absolutely fine so there's no reason to be, for me to be frightened or I'm perfectly capable to do this. So why am I nervous? You know, it doesn't run along any logical lines. And that's true because it's, it's unconscious. It's your unconscious mind and it's, it isn't logical. So let's have a little tour. And I'm gonna tell you some of the characteristics and how we can shift ourselves so we are working with the unconscious mind and this decreases the chances of this self-sabotage. So the first thing that I want to tell you about 
is that your unconscious mind wants to protect you. And it's really highly protective. It's overly protective. And we all know riding has its hazards, but we're willing to mitigate, let's say, against most of those who wear hard hats and body protectors and so on. But the mind goes one step beyond that and almost starts to make us believe that we, we can't do things and makes us feel very uncomfortable if we go and do certain activities on our horse. So let's have a look why that is and how we can um, stop that from happening. So your unconscious mind is actually wanting to protect you from all the what if scenarios that you keep sending it. And we do this all the time, don't we? Um, and it doesn't matter what activity we're doing, whether we're hacking or schooling or competing, it doesn't matter. Most of us have those negative what ifs. And we have these little movies, most of us, or it may be almost like a still picture of something happening, you know, and maybe this thing never happens, you know, maybe it's never happened to you. It has never happened to anyone that you've thought of, but it's still going through your mind and you're still thinking about it. And your unconscious mind is picking up on those disaster movies. And unfortunately, it's believing that they're true. So it doesn't think, oh, this is imaginary. It doesn't judge whether this is something that happens all the time or never happens it just says oh right oh my goodness that that must be true you're showing me real life so you can imagine if let's say you have thought about one of these what ifs 10 times your unconscious mind thinks i've been through that 10 times and how scary was that but if you sent it 10 times a day you know, so you've sent it hundreds of times or maybe thousands of times. Your unconscious mind's really believing now that riding is so risky and so scary and it desperately wants to protect you. Now, your caveman brain, so the unconscious, doesn't reason, doesn't use any logic and say, oh, hang on a sec, this is actually in your imagination. It just acts automatically. And what it does is that it tries to get you out of the situation, believes that you're in real danger because of all these little movies that we send. So it will make you feel uncomfortable. It'll make you feel anxious. And all the things that come with feeling anxious, you know, some people go rigid and stiff. Some people, the legs go to jelly. Um, other people can't think. Um, it could be that you, you, you jabber on, you talk lots and lots and lots and really, really quickly, or you go very quiet. Maybe you feel the butterflies or you've got sweaty palms. We know all the things that happen. And this is because your unconscious mind, first of all, starts to do something maybe a little bit low level, maybe even before you get on the horse, um, to make you feel a bit uncomfortable, make you think, oh, well, I won't ride. And then as you persist and decide, I am going to ride, I am going to get on, I am going to do whatever activity it is, then your unconscious mind sort of ramps up the anxiety and it, its sole purpose here is to get you off the horse and as riders we tend not to do that we tend to try and work through it so the mind's actually really really trying to help us out here um, but we need to work with it we need to calm down this high alert that, that it's on now so what can we do? So ask yourself, am I all right now in this moment? 
So this could be before you even get on the horse, before you even get to the yard. Um, it could be when you're sitting on the horse. It could be as you're warming up. Just quickly think, am I actually all right now? Is anything happening right now, apart from in my head? Is anything physically happening in this moment? Chances are the answer is no. So if the answer is no, then you can just say it to yourself a little bit more soothingly. Am I all right now in this moment? And now? And now, and now, and now. Yes, I'm all right now. And now, and now, and now. And that just helps to calm everything down. And also, it reinforces to the unconscious mind that you're okay. So this highly protective part of the mind is just given that release. I am okay now. I'm, I'm really okay. So then it, it takes you off that high, high alert. Also keeps your conscious mind occupied um, so that you don't dream up too many of these what ifs. Because if you're saying to yourself in your head, or you might be saying it out loud, I'm all right now, and now, and now, and now. And if you're going, you know, you could even do it to the footfall, then your conscious mind has got to think about the words that you're saying. Um, so it just gets that side of you out of the way and, and jams the message a little bit about those um, disaster movies that we've been sending. Okay, so convince the mind that you, you are okay. Let's have a look at another characteristic. So the second thing I want to talk about is that your unconscious mind takes everything really personally and listens in all the time. So let me give you a little bit of an example. Um, I was once mucking out, well, I muck out quite a lot, but this one time I was mucking out and two girls were having a conversation in neighboring stables and I wasn't part of the conversation, but I could hear them. And they were talking about somebody else who had difficulty getting on their horse, was nervous to get on. And they, they took, chatted long, a long time about why this would be and what had led her to feel so nervous. And I didn't really think much of it because, you know, it, it, I, I, it was before I'd learned any NLP and I, I just thought, well, it's a bit of a shame for this girl, but I didn't think much more of it. But the next time I went to get on my horse, having never had any kind of mountain problems, I really hesitated, I mean, quite badly hesitated to get on and I did all this faffing about where you've got your foot in the stirrup and your foot out, your foot in, your foot out. And the horse takes a minute step and you take your foot out and then you circle round. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, what on earth's going on? Never, <laughs> never had to do this kind of thing before where, I mean, just normally get on and if the horse takes a step, the horse takes a step. And what had happened to me was that my mind had taken that story on very, very personally and had decided that it was me that was in that story. And because the unconscious mind is listening in, whether you're listening attentively or not, the unconscious mind really is. And I'd, I'd sort of absorbed that fear, if you like, that wasn't my fear at all. And you might have come across similar things when people are chatting to you about their fears and their anxieties. And all of a sudden, you take those on board as well. So you have to be really careful of your chatter and, and I suppose at the same time, who you chat to. 
so if you say things like, I'm a rubbish rider, I'm a nervous rider, or you talk about somebody else, you have a good gossip, she can't ride that horse, he's really overhorsed himself, then your unconscious mind still thinks in all of those examples that you're talking about yourself. And it believes you, absolutely. It doesn't think, oh, you know, we're talking about somebody else or we're exaggerating a little bit. It just absorbs it without judgment, takes it on board that all of those things are true about you and uses that then as a new blueprint for how you are as a rider. So it's really important to try and think about what we, what we say about other people and what, how we describe ourselves, what labels we put on ourselves. Describing yourself as a rubbish rider or a nervous rider just kind of amplifies that in the mind. So think about the terminology that you're using, even if you're just being modest or you're having a bit of a joke, it, it still goes into your mind. The unconscious mind's not very sophisticated and it doesn't think, oh, you're being sarcastic or modest, it just absorbs it automatically and thinks that it's true. So what we need to do is speak kindly about ourselves and about others but you know we're only human <laughs> we're bound to say something at some point about ourselves or somebody else so if you do say something that be, could be construed as being a little bit unkind then we need to kind of get rid of it so your mind doesn't absorb it and one way to do that is to say inside your head that's how I used to think, or that's how I used to be. And it, it kind of cancels it out then. Um, there's other ways that you can stop yourself absorbing these things. So, you know, if somebody is chatting to you about all of their problems and all of their fears, and you think, I really don't want to take these on board. I really don't, I've got my own. I don't need other people's anxieties. Thank you very much. Then there are a couple of other things that you can do. Inside your head, you can say to yourself, one of these three or all of these three, because they're really strong words. Um, they're really great signpost words for the unconscious mind. You've got to do it in your best school mom voice. Um, so you've got to say no or stop or delete. Um, and those seem to just negate those comments that we make about ourselves or we make about others so that we don't absorb new anxieties or we don't reinforce what we've already got and what we're trying to get rid of. Okay, so the next thing, oh, what this does, sorry, <laughs> that cancels out the thought, keeps the unconscious mind believing the very best of you, changes the way that you think about yourself as a rider. So if you stop labeling yourself as nervous, if you think of yourself, I'm, you know, I'm progressing as a rider, or I'm learning all the time as a rider, or I'm, you know, I'm moving forward. I used to have some confidence issues, but I'm moving through those now. Any of those will change the way you think and change the way you behave. Um, so they're really important to have a go at. Okay, our next characteristic. Your unconscious mind prefers to get instructions from stories and symbols. We're kind of hardwired as humans to love a good story. Um, you know, from being young children and circle time or like in a bedtime story, anything like that. We, but we still carry that through into adulthood. We love 
those kind of things where we, we can imagine all these scenarios happening and all these events unfolding. So this is why visualization is really, really useful to riders. It's really powerful to have a visualization um, because this isn't you kind of talking yourself into confidence. It's not a conversation as such. You're imagining pictures and sounds and maybe feelings as well. And that is a beautiful way to uh, communicate with your unconscious mind. That's a very strong communication link rather than having the conversation with yourself, which is difficult and it starts to bring us back into that willpower kind of um, way of thinking. So let's do a little visualization together um, and, and see what you think of this. So if it makes it easier for you or more intense, just close your eyes. And you may have had quite a busy day today. And so all I want you to do just before we start the actual visualization, is just to think about where you've spread your energy around today. And maybe it was with family or friends or work colleagues. Maybe it was with your horses or your dogs. Maybe it was in some kind of task that you had to concentrate on. Wherever it was that you were having to deal with things, just imagine that you can pull that energy back and pull it back right into the center of you. You can withdraw it from all of those people and places and tasks that you've done. Bring it back to you. And then I want you to think about a time when you didn't feel nervous or lack confidence, wherever that time point would be. Maybe you were a teenager and you'd fly around the fields without a saddle. Or maybe you were even younger. Maybe it was just last year or maybe it was yesterday. Just think of a time point when those confidence issues didn't exist. Maybe it was before you started riding. Just go back in your mind to that time point. And as you go back to that time point, I want you to imagine that in front of you, a crossroads is springing up. It's a very special crossroads. Because instead of the usual three or four or five roads, there's possibly 10 roads here, all in front of you, all different choices. And you can see these roads and you know intuitively that each one represents a choice for you of how you would have moved forwards with your riding. Now, some choices you would never have taken. Some choices would be things like give up horses. Some choices would have somebody else ride a horse. Other choices would be sell your horse. So some of them are not necessarily choices that you ever wanted to make. And other choices seem a little bit more realistic. Or maybe they seem more ideal. Maybe one of them is where you are confident throughout and any problems or issues that arise are like water off a duck's back. You simply enjoy your riding. Maybe another one is that you got somehow a loss of confidence, but you regained it. And maybe another one is that you lost your confidence. And you can see in front of you this choice, this wide, wide choice of roads to take. And you know intuitively that there are some that are far better than others. 
Maybe they're brighter or lighter or more colorful or just somehow more attractive. I want you to just take a step onto one of those most attractive roads and just take a few steps down that road and just start to embody that choice where the full confidence is attained and maintained and just feel it, feel it strongly in your body, feel that confidence, feel that enjoyment, feel that release and that relief as you stand on this road. Just take a few moments to really enjoy that, really bask in that. And then I want you to fast forward your mind to the present day. I want you to imagine where you are now, right now, the room that you're in, keeping your eyes closed. But I want you to imagine again that these pathways, this unusual crossroads with multiple roads, again, springs up in front of you. And you've got all those choices again. One of the roads looks a little bit more attractive, more compelling than the rest. Maybe it's more colorful. Maybe it's lit up. Maybe the shape or the texture of the road underneath your feet looks just a little bit nicer. Start to take a few steps down that road. And once again, enjoy your choice. Enjoy this choice, enjoy standing there. Feel now the power, the potency of all that enthusiasm, enjoyment, that true harmony and bond with your horse. Feel that confidence, the success and determination, the motivation, and feel it really, really strongly within your body. Feel it throughout your body and enjoy just taking those first few steps down this road. I'll leave you for a moment just to really enjoy any sights or sounds or feelings as you travel down this most compelling, most ideal road. Whenever you're ready, you can come back to this place and this time and open your eyes. So I'll just give you a second just to come back to the here and now. So visualization is really powerful. And as you can tell, it's really, really easy. You can do it like this, imaginatively, or you can really imagine um, riding your horse so it's a bit more realistic as long as you put the sound on and you do it in um, normal time so by that I, I mean don't do it in slow motion some people imagine in slow motion um, do it in normal speed normal time um, imagine all the muscular movements all the positions that you're in you know your posture your hands your elbows your knees your thighs calves feet just imagine it and feel what it feels to have your legs against the sides feel what it feels like to have the reins in your hand to make it as realistic as you possibly can and then go and do the thing that you're wanting to do on the horse so what do these visualizations do for us? Well, it actually is a mind con. It cons your mind into thinking it's happening right now, that you're actually doing it. Because the unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. So in that visualization, it actually thinks you really were standing on that crossroads you really did it, it really happened. So if you imagine 
like that, 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 you know, something that is unreal, shall we say, or something that is more realistic, like riding your horse. It doesn't matter because the unconscious mind thinks it's true, that it's really happened. So if you visualize yourself riding, um, your unconscious mind thinks you've done it. So, you know, if it's hacking or it's jumping or competing or whatever it is, do 10 visualizations before you actually go and do it. And then your unconscious mind thinks that you're doing it for the 11th time and has sort of got into the habit that all's well. Just bear in mind that whatever the pictures are, all the words or thoughts that you send to the unconscious mind, it uses it as a template. So if we keep the visualizations nice and positive, then that's the template that it's trying to replicate for you. If you send the disaster movies, not only does it convince the unconscious mind that you're in danger, it starts to want to replicate that for you in a strange way. So it will start to make you feel worse. So your horse feels worse. And so everything unravels. So keep the visualizations going because they will help you to reinforce the positivity and the confidence. Okay, let's look at another characteristic. So this one is a nice one. Your unconscious mind makes a habit or an association really, really quickly, lightning speed. Um, and it, it'll make good habits really, really quickly. You know, um, habits are great, but, um, like driving a car, you, you no longer have to think, what do I do first? Oh, I need to put the key in the ignition, right? What do I do second? Oh, I need to turn the key. You just do it. You just do it naturally. And once something becomes a habit, that's why they're so useful. We don't need to think. We can do so much on autopilot. But <laughs> we also have the bad habits, which similarly run on the autopilot. So your habits may be good or bad, helpful or unhelpful. Um, but if we want to create something that's a good habit and it's helpful to us and it's a confidence trick, then we need to just remember once again that thinking about any situation will reinforce it. So we need to stop. There's that power word again. Stop going over past scenarios. So if you feel yourself falling into either a what if that's imaginative or something that's really happened, tell yourself to stop because we don't want those negative pictures. We don't want the disaster movies going to the mind anymore. And we know we need to stop explaining fears to others over and over. Um, it's really easy to do this. If something happens to tell lots and lots of people and maybe people will say well how did it go today and you find yourself having to repeat yourself over and over so like we said before use that delete use the stop so that you're not having to reinforce it if you do need to explain it to someone but if you're just thinking about it on your own do stop yourself so we need to stop it and as we said before, we can use enough or stop or delete or whatever your favorite word is just to kind of jolt you a little bit. Um, so you can shout it, you know, shout it like you mean it. Enough, stop, delete. Um, and then hopefully that will kind of make you stop doing that. And just again, what we said before, that whatever you send to your mind, it will use as a template. So it will try and replicate that for you um, because it likes to serve and um, it thinks this is what you want, which is usually the exact opposite of what we do want. 
So just be careful of what's going through your mind because it, it can get into a real habit to, to think about these things over and over. So it's the stopping of the ha habit, it's interrupting the pattern, it's jamming the signal before it ever gets a hold. And if you find yourself going into those thoughts, so long as you stop yourself early enough and then often enough each time it happens, something curious actually happens as well. You find yourself then going into the usual um, disaster movie, but you also hear yourself say stop before you actually say it. Um, so that stop or enough or delete becomes part of your new habit and part of your new pattern. So it's quite curious when that happens. Okay. So the last characteristic that we're going to look at is your unconscious mind doesn't understand the word not. So for instance, if I say to you, do not think about pink elephant dancing in a tutu. Now, <laughs> I imagine that a good majority of you will have imagined a pink elephant dancing in a tutu and then wiped your mental screen and said, no, no, we don't want that. Don't, don't imagine it, don't think about it. So what's happening there is that the unconscious mind just simply takes the word not out of that sentence. So when I say, do not think about that pink elephant, your mind just kicks out the word not. Um, and it hears, do think about a pink elephant and it wants to serve you. So it does, it, it gives you an image of a pink elephant in a tutu. Then your conscious mind, which is a bit slower, rushes in and says, no, 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 it was not, don't do not think about it. And so that then wipes your screen. Okay, so how can this help us as a rider? Well, we know now that the unconscious mind simply takes the word not out of the sentence, just ignores it completely. So if you say things like, even this is in your head or out loud, I do not want my horse to spook or bolt or refuse the jump. Your mind hears, I do want my horse to spook or bolt or refuse the jump. And your mind as I keep saying, it loves serving you. It really wants to do the best it can for you. It wants to do and replicate these things that you're asking for. So let's say it hears, I want my horse to spook. It'll think, well, right, okay. So best thing for that is to get you really, really anxious, get your heart rate going, um, get you so maybe you can't actually ride, you're just a passenger. Um, and so the horse gets a bit spooky and on their toes and, and maybe then we'll get what you want. We'll, we'll get that spook. Um, so it's very much the mind body connection, but we've got to just work out and think about the instructions that we give. And this could be verbally, um, or it can just be inside your head as well. So what do we do instead? Focus on what you want to have happen, not on what you don't want. So you don't want the spook, so focus on a nice calm ride. Okay. Think much more about what you say to yourself and others, because you might just, you know, just before you get on, um, you might just say to a friend, oh, you know, I, oh, gosh, I hope I don't get any refusals. Um, or, oh gosh, I hope that we don't tear off across the field. And it's just, it's, it's quite challenging to do because it's, it is woven into our language so intricately to say don't and to think about what we don't want. But just change your language a little bit. It will help you and help your mind. Your mind gets a bit confused um, by these things. So Take out the word don't and just think about what you do actually want. 
So I don't want to feel nervous. I don't want to fall off. I don't want to be out of control. And fake it until you make it with this one. Um, I don't often say that, but with the, the not one, um, sometimes it, it, it sounds a bit weird to say what I do want because it's not the way we, we think so often. So it may feel a little bit false to, to be saying things inside your head. <laughs> it may be a little bit false to be saying things like stop or enough or delete. Um, you might think it's a good job people can't hear what I'm saying to myself inside my head. Um, but it works, it works, it chips away at that communication. So the communication between what you actually do want and your unconscious mind gets a little bit freed up, communication becomes clearer. You've got a handle on how the unconscious works. It now understands what you actually want and will try and endeavor to get that for you. So everything just works a little bit more smoothly. And I know it's, it's strange because a lot of what we've talked about is to change your language um, and the visualizations as well. And you think, well, how on earth can how on earth can that help me? You know, just a few words here and there. But it's amazing how much it really, really does help to to change, make those small changes, and to you know make it a commitment to do, and keep disciplined enough to to keep doing these little changes, and it, it just snowballs. It really does snowball. And then of course it'll become your new habit. So just as a quick recap of what we've chatted about, your unconscious mind wants to protect you from the negative pictures and movies. Um, <clears throat> so the ideal thing is not to send the negative pictures and movies and use the word stop and enough or delete um, <clears throat> and to send more positive ones. Your unconscious mind takes everything very personally. So if you're talking about someone else or you overhear a conversation like my conversation at the yard when we were mucking out, it uh, absorbs all kinds of things that you really don't want to be absorbed into your mind. It listens in all the time, even if consciously you're thinking about something else. It makes associations really, really quickly. Good ones and bad ones. So we want to stick with the good. And it does not hear the word not. Um, use the visualizations with the sound and feelings switched on and using it in the real time as well so that you give your mind a really, really clear communication as to what you do want and you con it into thinking, of course, that you've already done it in your visualization, but in real life. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm happy to take any questions. Fantastic, thank you, Tracy. That's, I've been jotting notes down. Really, really interesting. Great stuff. Um, folks, if you want to type some questions for Tracy, um, that'd be brilliant. So you pop in the Q&A and type them. Um, and we've got a couple that were sent by email. So we'll start with those while people are typing their questions live. Um, shall I go first? I've got one here for you. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, no worries. So um, Julie says, um, I've owned my youngster for two years, done a lot of groundwork and back to myself. Um, I understand the importance of preparation before venturing out, but I'm really interested in anything I could learn to help me and my fear of what might happen in the moment when she gets scared. So I know about breathing, I've got a clear focus, know about the importance of clear leadership but um, in her head, um, but what can I do to give myself the best chance of putting it all into practice? So I guess this is a horse that actually is spooking and doing something in the moment. Okay, brilliant, okay. Um, there's a nice little exercise that you can do, um, and, and that is to get into peripheral vision. Um, it's good to practice off the horse, first of all, because it's not, unless we're gazing on beautiful panorama, 
most of the time we're very focused and the more we're looking at devices, the more our vision is very focused. So if you practice wide vision, I'm, you can't see me on Zoom, but I'm kind of opening up my arms so you can really, really stretch out and you can see really, really wide. The reason that's really nice to ride in is that there's a quirk of the human brain where if you're in peripheral vision, you can't have a negative thought or negative emotion. They're mutually exclusive. So either you're in peripheral vision and you're calm or you're in a more focused vision and then you can let the nerves and anxiety and everything else come in. So if you keep in a nice wide vision whilst you're riding, and obviously it's one of these things you have to practice. Um, so if you're hacking, you might be going from telegraph pole to telegraph pole and thinking, right, I'm going to stay in peripheral vision between those two telegraph poles. If you're in a school, you might think, well, I'll go from this marker to this marker, or I'll do a, you know, a 20 meter circle and see if I can st stay with it in walk. And you just build it up. Once you can do it in walk, you know, you can go all the way around the arena, change rain, then start to build it up in trot. And you can do it in any style of riding, but it's re it is really, really lovely to be able to do the peripheral vision. But I would start off when you're doing really mundane tasks, you know, you're mucking out, your, your bed might not look as good because you're in this peripheral vision, so you can't see all the bits of muck doesn't matter um or you know you're, you're watching television or I don't know washing up anything just practice staying in peripheral vision as long as you can and take a break and then go back to it and then try on the horse try and halt and then walk and so on that's interesting because actually when you're in the moment and you get anxious you actually tend to funnel your vision don't you that's one yeah. of the, the responses. So that's yeah. a really, yeah. really great technique. Wow. Talking talking of vision, I'm just thinking actually, Joseph, it'd be great. If you stop sharing, then people can see more of yeah. your your face. Yeah, when while we do the QA. That's brilliant. Excellent. Um, should I go next? I've got one. Yeah, go first on that. Okay, so it's gonna be interesting to see what you say on this one because I used to feel a lot of this as well. So this has come from Katie. Um, Katie couldn't make the webinar live, but she wants to have a question answered, which um, everyone can always do. And we'll try and get the question in for, for you. So uh, she has a real problem with feeling sick during show jumping rounds. She's always had it, even with my last horse who competed reasonably confidently. Uh, she come out feeling physically sick. I've had a young horse for a few years. And even when she's done courses, we've just trotted around. Now ready to start cantering even in lessons, jumping a course at the end. She keeps stopping, trotting or having a general meltdown because her brain is going, you're going to make yourself sick. It's really starting to hold back. That's right, really starting to hold me back and frustrating me a lot. Any advice? Okay, um, so it, it's one of these habits, isn't it? Unfortunately, that, that set off. Um, and now it's got that full association that when I ride, I'm sick or feel sick. Um, so it's breaking that habit. So I can give a couple of ideas. And if, if I think something like hypnosis would be wonderful for that kind of thing, but um, just a few ideas to try um, would be to change the language because she says herself, doesn't she? Something like I'm saying to myself, I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna be sick. Yeah. Um, so it, it's changing that. And obviously you can't say, I don't want to be sick or I won't be sick because that's all knots. But if you say, I'm, I'm going to feel fine, I'm going to feel fine. I'm going to feel fine. It, it's the mind body connection, isn't it? Going a little bit overboard here. Um, so it is having a strong visualization of riding, feeling absolutely fine in your stomach, you know, feeling good coming out of, or, getting off after the ride feeling good and, and really in the visualization being very very aware of your internal physiology and you know how how nice and calm it feels and how your stomach is so relaxed and and, and it would be 
rather than thinking about the riding, it would be all of those lovely, relaxed, calm feelings. And then if she starts saying, I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick, then um, using that stop to stop the pattern. Every time she thinks, I'm going to be, uh, stop um, and, and use that a little bit more and, and just see how it goes. And, and as I say, if, if that gets rid of it, that's wonderful. Um, but if something stronger is required, I think hypnosis would be lovely. Yeah, well, certainly Katie, when she watches back, she can try your visualisation. I was felt very relaxed during your visualisation process. It was brilliant. I just felt very calm. And I know that Katie's got some incredible countryside view hacks. So maybe she can visualise how she feels when she's hacking and try and transfer that to, to the times when she... Um, has this kind of you know feeling that she's going to be sick so because yeah. I know it's beautiful where she hacks and she loves it brilliant thank you Tracy just um with the this stop and the delete Tracy um this it is a technique that I sometimes use because I have a, a really silly visualization that goes through my head but I'm almost polite about it and I let myself <laughs> finish the sentence <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think what I'm hearing is you need to really interrupt yourself yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, that's so British, isn't it? I'll just, I won't butt in. I, won't. <laughs> I love it. You've got to, you've got to be, you know, you've got to put your teacher hat on. Yeah. You know, think of your strictest teacher back at school, the one that you were scared of. Yeah. And hear their voice. Stop. Yeah. It's very yeah. assertive, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Then my yeah. message to myself is to start interrupting myself. <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've got a couple of new questions come on from the guys that are here. Um, first one uh, from Vanessa. Are there any NLP books you would recommend? NLP for, for riders um, or just generally? Um, um, the question is general. Uh, Vanessa, okay. if you want to specifically add, then please add while Tracy answers the general one. I'm trying to think of a, a, a nice one that's easy to just get into. Um, there is, a, if you want NLP and, and you sort of want it um, with all the jargon and everything, there's a nice one called um, Timeline Therapy and the Basis of Personality. And that's by Tad James. Timeline Therapy and the Basis of Personality by Tad James. And it, it goes in and out of print. It's a funny one, but you can always get it on Amazon. Um, that's that's um, that's an, a sort of it's it's halfway between being full on jargon and a little bit chatty at the same time. That, that's quite accessible. And eBay is worth trying because you can often get sort of very good condition second hand ones if it's out of print, can't you as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got another question here from Angela. Are there any go to exercises to use in a competitive situation when you feel like you're beginning to freeze when riding your horse um oh that's a really common one freezing isn't it um and the way that i've dealt with that again has been mainly hypnosis but if you i mean visualization is is just hypnosis really um so i would think of warming yourself up so i would think of just from the top of your head just kind of doing a scan of your body slowly Think about all that warmth. Even if you think about having a warm shower and it's just dripping down, you know, and it's going to every part of your body, nice and slowly, right down to your toes. And just think about that shower. And as you're thinking about the warmth, you're also thinking about the tension that's in any muscle and releasing it um, just very, very slowly. Um, that that's quite nice because then you, you start to think, oh, I hadn't thought about my shoulders, but I'm actually quite tense in my shoulders. Um, I, and then you think, oh, my legs. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even think I was like doing this on my thighs. And, and it's just quite nice that that sort of nice grounding visualization. And is that something, again, that you should practice before you get to the competition? So you you're kind of aware of what normal is? Yeah. 
yeah yeah yeah, exactly yeah because once you get into that um that sphere you you, things go out of your head don't (laughs) you just go on autopilot so if you practice practice when you feel fine just having that nice warm drift down your body and unlocking and releasing every single muscle and just letting the tension out and you can even visualize the tension flowing out of your feet into the ground and so you've got some feeling coming back into your legs and you don't feel like you've just you're just paralyzed on the horse yeah and how long should people expect for things for them to feel like there's a significant change you know so if you're pushing your movies the the negative movies out of your head um how long before you actually don't need to do that anymore or do you have to do that forever no not forever not at all no if if you start doing a couple of these little tricks it to see a you know a tiny change will be days um but you might not be you know ready to go and do the grand national or something but you'll see a, a small change in yourself and then if you keep going usually it's it's weeks or maybe a month or something like that that you think oh, you know, I perhaps only need to do this every other day or I only need to do it when I'm doing something new. And, and you know, then it wanes a little bit and you don't need to do it anymore. It just becomes part of you. And, and Tracy, is there any way that we can, as a community, support each other? To, or does it have to be yourself that does this? Are there things that we can say that will help people um, come into the better mindset and, 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 and help themselves with nerves? In what way? Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, you know, all people here tonight and people we know that struggle with this, is there anything that we can do to help them? Right. Or oh, them right. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's almost doing what we've talked about in reverse order. So if somebody has felt particularly nervous on a ride and you go and say to them, how did it go? And they start revealing every single second of this, you know, drama. I mean, in the politest terms, you can say, don't reinforce it. Don't reinforce it. Don't use the word not. But, you know, don't don't reinforce it. And and just think about how you want it to go and write down all the good things write down all, all the, the good things that happened and all the things to work on. And, and just, it's, it's not having as well, people label themselves as nervous mm. um, because that just, that just, again, reinforces it and emphasizes something that we don't want emphasized. So it, it would you just be having a very gentle conversation with somebody when, when they are a nervous rider and just saying, do you know what you could do instead? Um, you, you could try this. And I, I know sometimes, you know, it, it can be a bit overbearing to receive advice from people. Um, everybody has a piece of advice for you, but in the nicest way possible, it, it might be something, or you could direct them to a particular website or, or something like that just just something different to, it, rather than you know this watching people try and face their fear and, and try and hammer through it that there is there's easier ways to get confident yeah and I guess you can point out sorry um, you guess you can point out how much was right you know because it's quite likely in something when you're going for a ride the thing that went wrong is this yeah. big and actually the thing where like it's that big yeah i mean yeah there, there's something um i can't remember exactly where where i read it but i thought it was really useful and they said go into the ride and think that even if your horse spooks even if your horse books even if your horse rears or whatever it is it's going to last 10 seconds maybe which seems like a, an eternity, I know, when, you, when you're in the middle of it. But let's say even, let's double it, 20 seconds. But you've ridden for 20 minutes. So if you can think, I've only got to put my brave pants on for 20 seconds. That's all. I just need to be brave in those 20 seconds. And the rest of the time doesn't matter. 
And sometimes that helps people just shift because they're like, oh, I don't have to be brave for the whole 20 minutes because I couldn't do that because, you know, my mind just won't let me. But I, I, I could just focus for 20 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, and cool. You, you yeah. talked a lot about hypnosis, which we haven't talked about in the webinar today, but tell us a little bit more about how hypnosis works and why is that? a great um, solution to sort of some, some, some anxiety problems? So it's, it's a way of getting into the unconscious mind really easily um, because the unconscious mind doesn't really take on board lots of chit chat and discussion. But hypnosis is just relaxation. I know everyone thinks about it like the stage hypnotist, but yeah. it's completely different what we're doing. So you're just a bit relaxed in your body. And the hypnotherapist takes you through some visualizations. To, I mean, very, very, very similar to what we've just done. And it's just a way of, of communicating to your mind and going through a ride. Very often, if I do a hypnosis for somebody, I'll take them through the type of ride that they want to do. Um, and, and if they say my horse spooks, then I won't, you know, leave out horse spooking I won't make this some kind of ideal fairy tale I'll have the horse spooking but they feel fine about it and they've got all the resources that the, and you know the skill that they need to to overcome that so it's it's just a way of convincing the mind suggesting to the mind that there's a, a completely different way of thinking that's in the bounds of, of that person's reality brilliant that's really helpful. Yeah, I've um, I've heard you talk before, Tracy. So something that, that I notice happens to a lot of people and happens to me is you your heart rate gets faster and your breathing gets quite shallow. And I I saw you talk about a technique about breathing. I think that might be really useful to share if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. It's a bit difficult. The hand one's a bit difficult to do on a horse, but a yeah. lot of the time people are better when they actually get on the horse than they are beforehand aren't yeah, they right, so, <laughs> so you you just get your hand and you go up your thumb and you breathe in and then you go down and you breathe out and you go up and you breathe in and you breathe out and you just go around your hand breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out but you know you do it in a nice slow rhythmical way and it just it like you say it slows you down because you you are physically doing this with your hand and so you're really slow you're forced to slow yourself down I, li I like that one too it's, it's good that one yeah it's something perhaps you can do when you sat on the lorry thinking about getting on because as you say often as soon as you sit in that saddle often it makes you feel more ah oh. Right, I'm in, I'm okay now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Tracy. I think we're out of questions right now. So be feel free to carry on typing. I'm just gonna um I'll just share this last slide so Tracy save you from having to do it. Oh, okay. Um, which is just to um chat about a oh I think I've put our pictures of us up there. Um that you're going to share a discount with all of the horse tribe. Tell us all about the the, the course that you've got there. So it's it's an online course, it's self-paced, so you can start anytime and there's no expiry on when you've got to finish. Um, it's five hours and there's five modules, each one's around about an hour. And I take you through different techniques. So I, I take you through, first of all, a little bit of a tour of the unconscious mind, a little bit more detail than we've done this evening and how to help yourself. Um, and then we do some techniques, a lot of it's confusion techniques so that you confuse the mind that your ideal situation is true and your non-ideal situation is not important. Um, so I take you through as though you were in the room with me. I explain the technique to you um, so that you can do it for yourself. Uh, that's, that's the main thing about the course. I want people to be able to do these techniques for themselves, practice for themselves. You know, 
sort of self-maintain if you like um so it's it's got a little bit of everything in there's some nlp in there there's even a little bit of hypnosis in there uh, a little bit of timeline therapy which is all to do with limiting beliefs and emotions so it's a bit, bit of a mix sounds amazing and you're offering a whopping discount for all the horse tribe aren't you <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that so yeah guys if you are interested in that in um, the course um we'll send it out we'll send the link out with uh, the email uh, to let you know that the recording's on the website um but and it'll also be on the website won't it yeah just to say this is a gold members isn't it sorry yeah gold member discount yeah um so yes so from 147 down to 70 pounds so thank you tracy that's amazing um and just before we um we finish just wanted to um chat through who's coming up so we've got andrew mclean um he's coming in from and well, he's not coming in he's on from australia on the 3rd of feb so that one is going to be 8 30 just because he so he doesn't have to get up at five um and he's going to be talking about naughty horses or are they um 10th of feb we've got fabulous claire By claire myers joining us um to help us understand what we can do physically to be better able to ride so how we can use pilates to improve our riding um jason webb's back on the 24th of feb talking about settling our horses out and about so actually what jason's going to talk to in terms of physically settling the horses and what Tra tracy shared today in terms of us settling ourselves we should be absolutely storming away by the 25th of february um and then ali wakelin is joining us on the 3rd of march to talk about starting and developing groundwork and interestingly ali actually trained originally with andrew mclean so uh some great people coming up so um hopefully we'll, you'll all you'll all join us for for some of those or all of them um so i think it's a thanks very much from us oh don't forget the questionnaire um when we go out of the webinar it'll come straight up on your screen if you could bob in and just answer the questions for us that would be fantastic and if you've got great ideas of what you'd like to see coming up in the future and um, the different topics you'd like us to talk about then please put that on the question on the feedback questionnaire and we'll aim to find some really good people to come and talk to us about it I think that's it. Tracy, you've been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was a blast. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It's gone really quickly. Um, it has gone quickly. Um, yeah. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.